remember today opens at 10 30 thank you so much kelvin for reminding us okay because the the u.s time zone has uh, changed so right now we don't have to be so excited at 9 30 but i think the excitement will continue at 10 30 especially recently it's something that is very interesting that's happening which is the u.s election how many of you have been following the news of the u.s election if you have can you type e in the chat <laughs> how many of you have been following very closely Old man versus auntie. Wow. <laughs> Kelvin, th this is very interesting description. It's the first time I hear someone describe like this, but well, uh, true, true be told, it's true. Okay. So, wow, well, Kelvin have been following. How about others? Like, do you guys follow the US election? If you never follow, can you type me as well? Okay, if you never follow US election news, just type me because, right, today we are going to cover quite a lot of things about what's happening. And uh, most importantly, it's uh, if things really turn out to be like, for example, if some of you wish Donald Trump to win, or maybe some of you wish that Harris will win, what will happen to the stock market? So let's have some uh, fun predicting. Okay, can everybody type P in the chat? Okay, P stands for prediction. <laughs> prediction. Huh? So once again, right, when it comes to prediction, let's see how uh, eventually we can all deduce together. Okay, I don't want it just be my one person prediction. I want you to see from the facts and data. And at the end of the day, you can also come up up with your own conclusion and how do you want to actually want to do in these uh, uncertain market as well right but before that i'm very curious how many of you wish trump to win if you wish trump to win the election right can you type t in the chat if you wish harris to win right can you type h in the chat so how many of you are trump supporter how many of you are harry supporter <laughs> okay well i see a lot of age okay gateman jenny all preferred harris okay some of you bb prefer trump okay well i have a lot of harry supporter in the house okay so so let's see okay later on okay i there's no uh i think i for, for myself I have no personal preference, but we shall see, okay, depends on whether is it Trump or is it Harris, how would that kind of impact the market, right? Because at the end of the day, right, the, uh, the, right now, all the US citizens, like a lot of them are already voting. So tomorrow will be the day when it's going to be like official, it will be like, Cut off. That means from tomorrow onwards, that will be the last day that the people who need to vote, they will stop voting and then they will start to count the votes. In fact, if you see some of the news right now, they have already started counting part of it and they are very, very close, right? Like like Trump, be it, is it Trump, be it, is it Harris? They're very close in terms of the votes. So it's very interesting. It's like very close, very tight right now. So we shall see what's going to happen to the market uh, after the election result. It it's officially announced, right? So now at the end of the day, right? How does that actually will impact, uh, will impact the market? So today, after I share my own insights, I also hope that you can come up with your own conclusion as well. And most importantly, it's how do we actually navigate through this uncertain market? And apart from me today, I actually also invited a special expert to come and share with you guys some additional insights later on, okay? But before I invite that special expert to come, I shall share my insights first, all right? So how many of you are excited for my insights, okay? If you're excited, can you type e in the chat, right? Excited for the election insights. Fantastic. I love that. I love that. Now, let's get started. Do you know, right, something very interesting? This is the stats that when I saw it, I was quite uh, mind blown by, by this, right? Do you know that for the past so many years, right, since 1950s, there was only two times, right? That means two years that election was a... Uh, Last year for the stock market, because as you can see, if you look at the dark blue region, right, dark blue means here, okay, over here, right, this is up, right, over here, election, it's also up, over here, election, it's also up, so this is a tiny up as well, but it's dark blue, so as you can see, right, out of like since 1950 all the way until today, right? Out of so many elections that we have been through, there are only two times that election actually result to a negative stock market gain that year. So that 
two particular years, one of them is obviously, it's very scary during the dot-com bubble. And then the 2008 financial crisis. Other times, actually, election is actually great for investors like you and me, right? Because it usually pull up the market, right? During that particular year as well. And in fact, this year, it's a very, very mind-blowing year. Because this year, 2024, is the best election year of the entire 21st century. As you can see, the blue line, which is our this year's election year performance, the stock market has gone up over 20% in one year. Versus some other years, as you can see, 2012, it went up 10%. Or 2016, went up 6.3%. During COVID year, even during COVID, it was a positive year. It went up 4.39%. Right. So how many of you have been actually investing in the stock market and actually you have been profiting because uh, it has been a great year for you? Right? If you have been making profits, can you type P in the chat? <laughs> okay, very good. Kelby has been making profits. I love that you have been investing. Definitely, right? If you don't do anything silly, you just buy the stock market, right? You just buy the S&P 500, you will have already made, been making money, right? Past one year, again, again, more than 20%. If you look at the past recent six months, it also went up by 10% as well, right? And that's why like, okay, very good. I'm very happy that some of you are gaining capital gains from options as well. Fantastic, right? So that's the power of investing. So as you can see, if you don't time the market and you just keep on investing through thick or thin, right? You are going to profit, right? As a ETF investor. And that's why I'm, I'm very passionate about ETF, which is, for example, if you buy the S&P 500, you don't have to do anything. You don't need to time the market and you are still able to make money in the long run, right? So for myself, as you can see, like ever since like just this year alone, after I switched to Weibo and my Weibo become my ETF portfolio, I don't need to do anything, right? For example, some of the ETFs I bought, like 10%, 11%, 12%. If you know how to use options, then obviously you can increase your return even more, right? But the whole beautiful thing is you don't need to time the market. How many of you love that? If you love that, can you type ETF in the chat, right? So I am a long-term advocate of ETF investing. If you have not get started, make sure you get started because well, that is the best way that any investor can start investing, all right? So now, of course, right? Having said that, long-term ETF, S&P 500, is going to make you money. But somehow in this current market situation, especially when the market has actually arrived to the all-time high, there seems to be some headwinds, right? And that's why for the past uh, five days, or in fact, for the past one month, it has been pretty volatile. And for the past five days, it's like it dropped like about 2% and all this. So how many of you felt that it's quite uncertain right now? If you felt it's uncertain, can you type U in the chat? Yeah, S&P 500 is like a blue chip, right? Just like what Kelvin said, right? You can just buy and hold, right? How many, oh, no one feels uncertain. You're all very sure exactly where is the market uh, going, right? Leverage on tech stocks. Okay, so, well, okay, let's take a look, okay? I know, right, maybe some of you are very shy. You don't want to uh, voice out. But I do understand that because the market is all-time high right now, there is definitely some uncertainty. Some people may be thinking that, oh, then should I actually start investing right now? Or should I maybe, maybe wait a little bit longer since I should I probably wait until the election, at least the election result is announced, right? How many of you are actually waiting in order for you to enter even more? If this is you, can you type W in the chat? Okay, W stands for uh, waiting. You're just waiting and see what's going to happen because at the end of the day, right, this is a big, 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 big uh, movement. There's going to be a big movement ahead, right, because of the election result. So, so now let's take a look at which sector will set to benefit should Harris win first, okay? Because we always look at ladies first, okay? <laughs> so can everybody type, type H in the chat, okay? H stands for Harris. So let's take a look at Harris, uh, if she were to win the, uh, the election, what might happen? So I actually went through quite a lot of data and these are the data that I extracted from this Moody's report. You can go and read up even more, okay, after this webinar so that you can have more uh, detailed insights by reading yourself as well. But for those who don't have time, you just want to have a very quick glance of exactly what is being presented in a report. So this is what this uh, webinar is about as well. So now, the first thing is, when it comes to, uh, like due to time constraint, I'm just going to zoom into the most, uh, like the, the sector that's going to, in my opinion, gonna have the biggest impact, okay? Can everybody type big in the chat, right? 
because at the end of the day, there are so many sectors. If I cover every single thing, then uh, I think we will probably cover until tomorrow. <laughs> then we are still here. <laughs> so that's why I just want to make sure use the time wisely and just zoom into the bigger sector that I think that's going to have the greatest impact. Depends on the policy because uh, different election uh, candidate do have their different preference as well when it comes to uh, what kind of sectors they want to grow on, right? So now let's take a look at Harris first. And as you can see, right, these are the government spending under President Harris, right? Should she be elected? This is what she's going to propose spending on. So guys, can you tell me which sector actually um, make you feel that, oh, wow, this sector has potential to consider investing in, just based on the chart itself, because that's her, her proposed spending, right? So based on this, which color do you think it stands out the most when it comes to Harry's proposal? Which color it stands out the most? Oh, wow. Very, very good. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. It is the green, right? Because as you can see, right, the green has from here, right, it jumped up quite significantly. And then after that, it continued to actually have a very, very uh, strong, solid spending every single year, right? And that is why, right, healthcare is definitely one of the sectors that you can consider looking into should Harris actually won the election, right? And um, if you are not too sure what kind of healthcare uh, companies to invest in individually, it's always good to start with ETF, right? Because when you buy the entire ETF, which in this case is XLV, you can uh, note it down somewhere, right? Basically, when you buy XLV, firstly, you can see that the expense ratio is very low. That means you are paying very little by owning this portfolio. And then secondly, right, you are not buying just one stock. You are buying 62 holdings. What kind of holdings are there? As you can see, right, you have your uh, United Health Group, you have your Johnson & Johnson, you have your Merck & Co. All these are something that you are probably already very familiar if you are into the healthcare industry, right? Even though you're not into the healthcare industry, you definitely have some heard of some of the names before, right? Maybe some of you also have heard of uh, Intuitive Surgical as well. So all these are already inside the XLV portfolio. So what you can do is if you buy XLV, right, you can either buy the stocks directly or you can even consider using options because it allows options as well, right? So this is something that you can look into and if you can see that XLV for the past five years, it has gained in terms of the capital appreciation, 55%. Not too bad, right? Because year on year, that's about 8 to 9% kind of return compounded year on year. And this is definitely a lot better than you putting your money in a bank, right? Because bank is not going to give you any <laughs> a great decent return. But XLV, be a very stable ETF, collecting very great healthcare business in the long run. And as you can see, for the past five years, it's been pretty consistent. In fact, if you stretch your horizon even longer, the gain is even more, right? And you can also see that XLV is unlike S&P 500, which has like gone very, very much like, like, like this, right? XLV has been pretty stable, right, for the past few years. And that means you actually have a better uh, margin of safety because the stock price of this ETF has not run up greatly. Okay, how many of you understand where I'm coming from? If you understand, can you type you in the chat, right? So if you believe that in the long term, Healthcare is something that people will continue to spend money on and not just help uh, people who's going to spend money, right? Because the government, okay, Harris, she is also going to inject a lot of funding inside. Then it will definitely be beneficial to uh, the entire sector in the long run as well, right? So this is for Harris. So now let's take a look at Trump, right? How about Trump? What do you think, which sector do you think Trump will be? putting a lot of emphasis on, should he be the president? Ah, okay. So some of you are guessing tech. Some of you are guessing tech. Oh, wow. Very good. Okay, definitely tech will be one of the very good sector. Uh, however, if you know Trump well enough, right, what kind of things does he like to do? <laughs> yes, he like to rage something. <laughs> he like to rage war. <laughs> no, more like uh, he just want to make sure he, he maintain the US superpower 
And that's why he, in fact, he, he keep on saying that he's going to increase his defense spending and not just he himself, right? He has actually been encouraging other countries, right, in the NATO, including your United Kingdom, including your Europe countries to increase their spending as well. Uh, uh, 3% GDP on defense spending. So uh, let's take a look at how about US, right? Just looking at the US itself, right? Uh, the defense budget, if to increase to 3% of the GDP, right, the defense budget will have to go to over a trillion dollar, which is more than 109 billion more than it is today, right? So that means the defense sector, right, should Trump continue to uh, like win the election, actually even Harry's win the election, US is definitely continue to go and spend on defense as well, right? Because they don't want to lose out in this uh, position in terms of the power play between other countries as well. So uh, regardless, this sector is going to grow just that when Trump is going to be elected, he's definitely going to spend more as compared to Harris. So uh, as you can see, right, what kind of things that you can invest in if, when it comes to defense sector, Apart from individual stocks, if you're familiar with, right? If you're not familiar with, then you can always, once again, go with ETF. For example, if you get, look at this ETF, right? Which is uh, this ITA, right? Maybe you can put it in the chat, then you can uh, actually have it uh, remember down in, inside here as well. So ITA includes a lot of the very, very famous uh, long established uh, defense company. Your Lockheed Martin is here. Your Radian is here, right? So when you buy into... Uh, I ITA, you are literally buying into this entire portfolio. And for defense, it hasn't been increasing much, right? For the past five years, it only went up about 27%, right? But if the, the Trump is back into action again, well, you never know, maybe this sector will have a lot more uh, pick up from now on, right? So this is what I think if uh, Trump is to win, then this is a sector that you should consider looking into as well, right? And uh, once again, right, if you have options, you can even do options position uh, on it as well, right? So that is the sector. How many of you are clear about the sector? If you're clear, can you type S in the chat, right? So... After we go through the sector analysis, which are the two big sectors, in my opinion, is going to have the major impact should they be elected, either one of them be elected. Now, let's look at, look at the general stock market, right? Because uh, sectors can be very zoom in. Let's zoom out a little bit more. How would that just impact on the stock market in general? So now, as you can see, different candidates do have different uh, proposals. They do have different policy inclination. So according to Trump, he actually wants to cut the corporate tax rate even more. So right now, the corporate tax rate was 20, is 21%. So he's going to propose to 15%. So guys, let me ask you this question. If you cut corporate tax rate, uh, is this beneficial to business? Yes or no? What do you think? Do you think it's beneficial to business? As a business owner, you now pay less. Exactly, right? So when you pay less to, to the government, you have more money right now, right? In your account and you can choose to hire more people, right? Or you can choose to invest in more projects, right? Then you're able to grow your business even further. So in this case, actually it's good for business. Their bottom line is going to look even nicer. And uh, when a financial statement of the business looks good, right? business has more money to reinvest and all this, then eventually when it's able to make more profits, that's how the stock price will eventually follow as well. So this is definitely a good news if you are an investor like you and me, right? So this is a favorable uh, policy for investors, okay? So, but how about Harris, okay? Harris is kind of the opposite, right? So instead of reducing the corporate tax rate, she is going to increase, right? From 21% to 28% because by doing so, she's able to generate uh, more uh, money for the government, right? So that they, she can, uh, she can, she have collect more tax as well. And at the same time, this is just for the corporate tax. Then there's also additional different corporate tax that she's looking into. But basically, uh, if Harris were to become the president, then you will do, you will tend to see that the business tax is going to increase. So then that opposite is going to happen. The business owners are not going to be benefiting from this because they're going to pay more tax and their bottom line is going to be squeezed as well. So 
net net okay in this case uh harris is not going to be very favorable to the stock market okay how many of you can understand so far if you understand can you type you in the chat all right so now so this is the first first policy impact so but of course there are other things as well so don't just look at this then say okay then let's not uh, vote for harris because harris is not good for us okay but let's look at other things as well okay because apart from uh this corporate tax policy that they have different opinion on there are also other things that trump it's uh very very uh strong on right so uh but look at this chart i think it's quite interesting um, based on this, okay, projection wise, the GDP growth of uh US will be will be different, slightly different, depends on who will be elected. So uh you can see right right now, okay, the Democrats sweep. If it's Democrats, right, that means this is Harris. If Harris win, right, the GDP actually looks uh okay, sorry, sorry, no, it's Harris, Harris and divided Congress, and then Republican sweep. And then Trump and divided Congress. Okay, so, but as you can see, actually for Harris, right, or the Democrats, when they win, eventually, eventually, right, the Republican will be better when it comes to the GDP growth rate of the entire US. Okay, uh, frankly, I don't think I have a very, very clear reason why is it that the US is going to perform better in GDP if the Republican is going to win. But I can assume that because the corporate tax is going to be lower and because of that, uh, the co company is going to make more money and that's how the GDP growth rate is going to increase, right? That's my assumption. So in general, when the GDP growth rate is bigger, then the stock market is going to rise higher as well, right? So look at, based on the current uh, information we can have right now or the prediction that we can have right now, it seems that Trump will be better, fa more favorable towards the stock market, right? However, okay, that is just one side of the coin. The other side of the coin that you need to look at is Trump, he is going to implement tariffs on goods, right? And not just on on China, right? China is going to be like tax 60% for its goods being imported into the US, right? But at the same time, Trump is also going to implement like between 10 to 20% on all imports. It doesn't matter which country, right? Be it, is it Europe whatsoever? As long as it's export imports, you are going to get uh, tax, right? So when this happened, right? At the end of the day, right? When, of course, the countries, they uh, the companies from other countries, they will have to pay more in order to enter US. But make a guess, at the end of the day, who will be actually feeling the impact? Who will be feeling the impact? Is it really the corporations? Is it really the corporations that will feel the impact? Or is it very good, right? It's a consumer, because at the end of the day, it's the consumers who need to buy the product. So the corporates will just have to increase their price at the same time, right? And then like tariffs and all this. So things become more expensive. And because of that, right, the inflation, right, should Trump be elected, uh, actually the inflation rate might climb up again, right? Because right now, okay, based on the blue line, it's been sloping down. But you can see if Republican is to uh, like, like have uh, a win, right? The green line is going to climb up. And that is uh, basically if Trump is being elected, inflation likely to come back, right? So when inflation is back, there's probably a lot more uncertainty in the stock market once again, right? Because of that, right? That will also potentially be impacting the stock market negatively as well, right? But on the other hand, if uh, Harris or the uh, Democrats continue to stay as it is, that means uh, they are going to win another election, then you can see that actually the, uh, the, the inflation rate is predicted to uh, trend down, right? Which is what we are expecting right now. But if Trump if were to come back, then maybe the inflation rate might not be something that we can uh, predict as of for now. And um, lastly, right, you can see regardless whether is it Harry is going to win or Trump is going to win, the US is still going to print money, right? Because that is just how they, they have been running the country. So uh, there will be, uh, your US dollar is going to continue to like definitely, right? In terms of value, it would not be able to preserve as much as it is. And that is why it's so important that we stay invested. Because if you just keep everything in cash, 
I think that is the greatest danger because inflation is definitely going to catch up and then your money is going to lose value as well. So make sure you stay invested. Okay, if you understand where I'm coming from, can you type I in the chat? Yes, very good, right? Anyone here know about the macro economics? So what is the market movement projection ahead? So if you look at the report that I just sent you by Moody, actually they already make certain form of projection. So let's take a look at the stats that they predicted should Harris win. This is the baseline scenario, okay? According to them, this is a baseline scenario. And 2024 is where we are right now. And with the market trending ahead, 2025 to 2028, this is what they predict. The S&P 500 stock price index, it's going to rise, right? From the current point, all the way to about 6,200 points, right? So the percentage year-on-year -year change is about 3%, 4%, 6% year-on-year -year continuously for the next uh, four to five years, right? So, so in this case, right, should Harris win, uh, the stock market is predicted to increase, right? So this is for Harris. How about Trump? Now let's take a look. For Trump, they also have this scenario projected. And... You can see from the 5,198 points, it's still going to rise. Rise to what? Rise to about 6,100 points. If you still remember Harry's just now, it was about 6,200 points. So according to Moody's projection, right, if Harry's was to win, they would likely have a better stock market performance probably because uh, she is a lot more predictable than Trump. And uh, usually the stock market like predictability. If it's uncertain, the stock market doesn't know how to react and they become more, more volatile. But if it's uh, Harris back in uh, a, a stay in, stays in the power, the, the Democrat stays in the power, the policy is not going to have drastic changes. And because of that, the stock market is more predictable. And at the same time, they are uh, going to do certain uh, form of policies that it's just not going to have a sudden drastic change. And because of that, the stock market generally tend to rise in a much more predictable fashion, right? So in this case, if you're looking at investing, maybe, okay, Harris will be a better candidate to go for, for better predictability. But once again, but can you see that regardless whether is it Harris were to win or is it uh, Trump going to win, the stock market is still going to rise <laughs> based on the prediction. If you can see that, okay, can everybody type, don't care. Okay? That means you really don't need to care whether who is going to be the winner because in the long run, right, uh, if you just buy the S&P 500, it's going to be fine, right? It's really, really going to be fine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, very good. Optimistic and don't need to care, right? So now that is the number one conclusion that we are, uh, we come off already. However, very importantly, right, I want you to also see some very interesting stats, right? As you can see, right, um, even though the stock market is going to continue to tramp upwards, but the, gra the gravity of the, the magnitude of increase is actually lesser, right? Because can you see, right, back in 2016 to 2022, right, the increment in terms of percentage of change was 11%. And then after that, for the past four, four years, right, the stock market does fantastically well, right? More than 12%. Uh, and based on their projection, right, 2024 to 2028 onwards, it's not going to be as rosy as what we experience, right, according to them. It was only about 4.2% for Trump's case and for Harry's case, slightly better, but it's still not going to be fantastic. So they are predicting a lower 10-digit return as compared to the double-digit return that we have been enjoying, right? So, um, once again, I think prediction can never be 100% be relied on because nobody can truly predict the stock market. How many of you agree? If you agree, you can type A in the chat, right? But given this data, I think it's also good that we look into how we can structure our portfolio better because should the bear case scenario happen like this, right? That means the stock market rise about 4 to 5%. Well, should this bear case scenario happen, your portfolio overall is still being strong right it's still gonna be fine it's still gonna stay strong so for myself there that's that's what i'm intending to do right so that's why like in the recent year right especially for the past one year when the stock market has gone up like pretty high i kind of 
stop injecting a lot of cash into the stock market because there's just not so much good opportunities inside the stock market, right? So for myself, I'm now right now having quite a lot of cash. As you can see, my equity portfolio right now, it's about 45%, right? And then I do have about 27% of cash that I'm just looking at, oh, where, where can I where can I part this cash? So right now I'm just putting in, in a lot in the money market funds, just giving me that about 4% return. Not fantastic, but definitely better than putting it in the bank, right? That's how I'm going to use, uh, how I'm using my liquid cash, right? But actually I'm looking at opportunities, where can I part my cash better? And at the same time, recently, if you look at my, uh, watch my latest YouTube video, I actually went to buy gold. So I my first $20,000 investment <laughs> as an inflation hedge, because um, if US is going to continue to print money for sure, right? So in, if one day really there's a default in terms of the fiat currency whatsoever, then I know that, well, at least I have some of the gold to add as a cushion. So that's how I started buying gold. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you go and watch it. It's my latest video. And right now gold is like 1.26% of my portfolio. I do intend to increase it a little bit more to 5% to maximum 10% of my portfolio over time as well. Right. Uh, then of obviously there are other things that I will not touch, which is my rainy day funds. And I do have a little bit into crypto. And this is more like a speculation game because I really don't know whether that 3.84% is going to do well eventually. But I just put it there. Should I lose it? I lose it. But if I don't lose it, that means if crypto like Bitcoin is going to do even better, wow, then I'm very happy as well. So basically this is more like a bet, right? So out of all these different asset classes, as you can see, right? Cash, uh, I have a lot of cash right now, but I need to deploy. So that's why for myself, one of another very good way of me to deploy my cash, right? Which is I only left with kind of like one option, right? What is that one option? <laughs> now, one option that I really don't mind uh, putting a lot of cash inside because I know long term, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very stable, right? And long term, it's going to have capital appreciation as well, right? <laughs> exactly, right? That is my property, right? So you, see, you can see that right now, property take out about 16% of my investment and I am considering, oh, then should I actually invest in, you know, like either sell away this property, then I can actually use that sum, the cash to get back and I can buy a bigger property. So this is something that I'm thinking through during this period of time to see how can I utilize uh, whatever like, like assets that I have right now to build an even stronger portfolio, right? So that is why for myself, right? If you watch my uh, video previously, uh, I bought Normentum Park. Okay, uh, it's a very funny video. I call it couple breakup. Sorry, but this is just uh, it's not true. Okay, it's just for for hook. Okay, <laughs> you see, it's just an introduction into my no member part condo, and and so far, okay, why I enjoy the property journey. It's because, right, at first you do need more uh, cash up front. However, once you settle this uh, one-time so-called lump sum that in, term, in terms of your down payment and all this, right? And then for myself, I bought it for investment purposes and that's how I rent it out. When I rent it out, my tenant right now, basically every single month I'm collecting rent from my tenant and the, the, the rent is more than enough to cover all my expenses, right? Be it, is it my property tax? Be it, is it my, uh, my mortgage, right? It basically cover all my expenses. So literally I'm having additional cash flow by investing in property. And uh, this is just passive income, right? And on top of that, when I sell away my property, I am also going to have capital appreciation as well. So uh, later on, okay, in fact, I'm inviting an expert to come here to share with you. In fact, I want him to look at my property portfolio and give me a so-called a live consultation to see exactly what can I do right now, you know, as Chloe, what can I do to consider leveling up my property game or should I stay put? Uh, so if you have any questions or like if you just want to learn exactly how to do property investing as well, right? Apart from the stock market that we have been covering through all the time, right? Exactly what can you do with your property game? Then I think you stay on a little bit more. You're going to learn a lot from the expert I'm going to invite, all right? So today, right, it's not Ethan, right? A lot of times you guys are very familiar with Ethan because we always do market updates together. Uh, but because I've been doing market updates with Ethan so many times, in fact, a lot of you come and ask me about, oh, I want to 
like should I sell away my house or should I buy this property and Eden is not the best person because Eden is a mortgage broker he doesn't provide any real estate advice right and that's why because of all these private questions I received I decided to invite a good friend of mine right and he is himself right a real estate expert with more than 16 years of experience and maybe some of you guys have seen him before okay maybe some of you have seen him before Thomas and he is a TikTok star right TikTok superstar if he, I think in terms of the real estate he's one of the highest most followed TikTok uh, real estate person in Singapore 20, 26,000 followers and he gives very interesting content on real estate on what to do with your property investing or property home what should you do with it and very interestingly is uh, he's also a magician okay he loves to play magics and all this if later got time maybe we can get, get Thomas to show us some trick okay? only if got time okay but most importantly over the past 16 years he has been Basically, not just helping his clients, right? Because he gave a lot of great advice to help his clients to grow their investment portfolio or buy their first home, sell their first home, and then basically do flipping and all this. Because of the insights that he has, he has also helped himself, right? And his family to buy a landed property at a very young age, right? So that's why I think there's a lot of, a lot of insights that he's going to share with us. And I also want him to look at my portfolio on my property uh, investment to see how I can level up further from here. So how many of you are ready to learn from Thomas? If you're ready, can you type R in the chat? How many of you are ready to learn from Thomas? If you're ready, can you type R in the chat? All right, thank you so much. All right, so without further ado, let's welcome Thomas to be here. Okay, Thomas. Hello. Okay, let me spotlight you. Hey, hi, how are you? Hi, great. Okay, guys, by the way, okay, so mm. this is the actual background of Thomas' house. <laughs> I'm yeah. using, I am using virtual background. <laughs> he is the actual background. Okay, I, I really love his house. It's a very beautiful, I think, three floor, three floor landed. Is that correct? Yeah, three and a half. <laughs> and he has his own gym inside his house. Like, oh, super amazing. <laughs> In At Serangoon, right? Yeah, Serangoon. Okay, so I think like a lot of uh, a lot of my my, my audience, my students are very mm. excited. So Thomas, sure. I'm able to share with us, right? I know like yes. um recently before you look into my portfolio, I know mm. like in terms of property prices, it has really gone up so yes. so much, especially like since COVID. And That's right. uh, very often I have this question in my head as well, like with the property price gone up so much. Yes. It's still a good time to buy, right? If you look at this chart, I think it's like uh, as as much as the stock market is be behaving like the stock market as well. So do you think yes. it's too high right now? Oh, wow. Um, Different property segment move in different pace, all right? So uh, let's take HDB, for example. Um, the, When the government built a lot of BTOs, Right, And I think you all have already seen in the news that the government is going to speed up the construction process of BTOs. So this in itself would cause HDB prices to stabilize. Okay, So different property segment, they move at different pace. So for HDB, the prices of HDB is closely tied to the government's regulation. If the government was a tweak how much CPF you can use for your property, this would also affect the affordability, right? So that, that's HDB. While in terms of landed properties, it is pretty much evergreen, right? Because landed property segment is what we call an aspirational property. Anybody, like let's say, for example, during the tech boom, every single CEO of the tech companies would have bought a GCB, Razor, Grab, right? All the crypto company CEO, they all bought GCBs, right? So that, that in itself is evergreen. Whichever segment is going to perform Whoever makes money, eventually, I think most people will want to own and live in a landed property, mm. right? So landed is, is evergreen, right? So which brings us down to the condo segment. Uh, if we talk about resale condo, to be very honest, um, it's taking a hit, mm. right? And one of the biggest blind spots for resale condo is we look at the property price index, at, index as a whole, and this is not a very fair comparison. Because when you look at a property price index, it is um, gelled together with the new launches. Mm. So if you see that 
PPI property price index is actually going up. It it could be the new launchers pulling up the average price Prices. of properties, right? Mm. And because I'm a property agent and I'm on, on the ground selling properties for my clients, I see firsthand what are some of the difficult properties to that is very hard to sell, mm. uh, which segment that you should never touch. Uh, certain property types in certain area is just you it's not favorable. Mm. Okay. So I think uh, with regards to this, it, it gives you the overview of how the Singapore property market is like. So coming to will property price go up further, maybe I can share my iPad. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I think then, you have uh, all the statistics. I'm just yes. looking okay. forward to learn. Okay, are you able okay, to I'm just, I'm just going to press share screen. All right, so now you can see my iPad, right? Not yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. There, 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 there. Okay, I think it's starting now. Okay, good. All right, okay. So I'm going to share a concept with you uh, that is very, it's a concept that if the moment you understand, you will know why property prices will continue to go up in the specific segment. Huh? I'm not talking about across the board. Okay. Okay. So every property has this cycle where the first owners will definitely be the developers, right? For mm. HDB will be HDB. This is the first owner. Mm. So every time they sell this property to the next person, this person is called the first owner. Then after that will be the second owner and then third owner, so on and so forth, right? Mm. So every time a property change hand, one thing would happen and it's called profit margin, mm. right? When the developer sell the property to you, they would make a profit margin. From the first owner to the second owner, it will keep happening, okay? Yep. So... What you want to avoid as much as possible is do not be late into the game in the specific development. Mm. So for example, if this is a condo and we have a few different levels, right? we got level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5, just to understand the concept. Mm. Now, assuming everybody bought this property at $1 million, right? So um, let's say level five decided to sell the property at $1.3 million. So you are coming in as a resale buyer as the second owner because this guy is the first owner, right? Yeah. So you need to understand the concept of exposure to risk. I call it in short EOR, exposure to risk. Mm. So your risk is now higher because everybody within the de development from level one to two to three to four, they are holding on to the exact same property as you for 1 million while you're coming in at 1.3. So coming back to the question, can property price continue to go up? It depends on within this block itself. Are you the first, second or third owner? Did you buy the property at 1 million or did you buy at 1.3? So if you had bought at 1.3, obviously down the road, you hope to sell the property assuming at 1.5, yep. right? But now you're competing with four other owners who are happy to just sell at 1.3 or 1.4 or even 1.2 because even at 1.2, they make profits. Mm. So this is one of the major concepts for you to understand why and how even though certain properties are already so expensive, this is the technicality behind why they can still increase in price. So this concept I call alignment of your neighbor's interests. Mm. You need to make sure that everybody within the same block have the common interest. Buy at 1 million, everybody will hope to sell at 1.3, correct? Mm. It's, it's pretty similar to your portfolio because that, that's plus minus your the quantum of the property that you have bought. Everybody hope to make that two to 300,000. Mm. So you don't want to be the person coming in at 1.3 and selling mm. it at 1.5. It's going to be difficult. And this also ties in with that resale uh, thing that we were talking about just now. Resale properties are kind of taking a hit because they don't have the alignment of the neighbor's interest. Mm. Yeah, yeah so I hope this answers. I so then if we go to the next question, like since you're talking about resale, right? So then yes. is it true that then resale versus uh you know new launch? Yep. Which is better? But I know new launch price is 
really crazy right now. Like even the latest yes. launch at Woodlands is more than like 2,000 plus. Yeah, so, and that's like yeah. stickers. Correct. So Woodlands right now is about $2,080 per square feet. Mm. And this is caught unprecedented price. Never before in the history of Woodlands have they seen properties at $2,080 and they still sell 80 over percent in one day. Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. Yes. So here's the question, right? Resale versus new launch. Okay, before I talk about that, right, I need you all to understand this simple concept. What causes property price to increase? All right? There's a lot of things, but primarily there's the one major factor is this one word, which is called valuation. Okay valuation right because everybody who takes who buys a property will take a loan right yeah. so for as long as your valuation is in sync buyers can afford okay. to oh sorry my, my cat just dropped something okay so coming back to resale versus new launch uh, when you buy that by the way there is no one is better than the other because they both serve different needs mm. and different uh, situation so for resale property, if you are looking to buy a resale property, you will become this second or third owner, right? Yep, you yep. become the person who buys at 1.3, where everybody buys at 1 million. Mm. So how do we determine if a resale property is safe? Is when you know within the whole block, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5, majority of them are already holding on to that unit at 1.3, I would mm. say it's rather safe. Mm. So this uh, brings me back to this thing called the stack analysis. Mm. Okay. So before you buy any property, above and beyond just seeing, what wow, do I like this unit? Is the facing good? Is the feng shui right? Unit number correct? Then you go ahead to buy. Without doing the stack analysis to identify your exposure to risk, mm. uh, down the road when you sell, it could become an issue. Okay, so like, correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, you need to check your neighbors, like right, like did they actually are they the second owner or are they the first yes. owner? If, if a lot of them are first owner, you are going to you're going to lose out, right? Because they actually bought it much cheaper than you, and they can afford to sell cheaper. But if majority yes. of us are like second owner or third owner, then we are yes. in the same same skin, right? Like basically, we all have the intention of increase the price, right? Exactly, alignment of the neighbors' interest is right there. Hmm. Okay, so stack analysis is a very interesting view. I'm going to give you a live demonstration right now. Yeah, how do you tell, how do you see whether like, whether are, are we aligned or not? <laughs> like, who, right. who are the second owner? Are they the first owner or not? All right, so I'm going to use this uh, as an example, Normandon Park, just yeah. for analysis sake. Yes, please analyze my property. <laughs> But are you sure you want me to, to, to say it out loud, your unit number? <laughs> general, general. Just talk about general. general. Uh? In case okay, so many now, people visit my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you see, uh, when I come to this page, right, I want you to zoom your eyes into the little box. Wait, mm -hmm. let's, let's zoom our eyes into 2336. 2336, okay, on the left-hand corner. Yeah. On the left-hand corner. So in that box, on the top right-hand corner, you can see that uh, there's this thing called the one-bedroom. Okay, so just sweep your eyes across, you can see 2337 is 3 beta, 2338 is 5 beta, so on and so forth. Can see? Yep, yep. Now, the second line I want you to, to draw your attention to is the caveats. You can see, right? 2336 is yes. one caveat. Mm. Okay, the next line I want you to see the color. Mm. I want you to see all the colors over there, the estimated P slash L. Mm. P and L. So, yeah, the estimated P and L, right? I want you to just see, look very closely. Whenever you see the, the number two caveats, P and L is typically lower. Mm. You can see, right? Number so, two caveat? What do you mean? Uh, let's, uh, let's say, for example, two, two, three, nine. Oh, yeah, two caveats. Oh, yeah. So this person is the second owner already. Oh. You can see this person, right? After holding this property for eight months, he's only up a twelve thousand dollar. Where else, if you scroll down two one three nine, the two beta, you can see this person hold for three years. The first owner, his profit is two seven nine seven one nine. Can you see? Two one three nine. 
Yes, uh, 279,000. Oh, yeah, 12,000 yes. versus 279,000. Exactly, right? So can you imagine, if you were the person who bought 2239, by buying this property, uh, he bought at 1.62 million. Eh? Mm. By buying this property at 1.62 million, you already lost 4% stamp duty. Mm. Haven't include renovation. Because you're second owner, ma. chances yeah. are the first owner, uh, you might not like the design. Might so, want to renovate. Mm. Yeah, this person is already in deficit. I mean, it's quite safe to say. Mm. So, mm. This bird's eye view stack analysis gives you a very clear idea the moment you are second or third or fourth owner, where everybody else is first, you stand to have the highest exposure to risk. Yeah, okay. and I can see a lot of them, it's first caveat. That means a lot of the momentum part haven't sold to another person yet. Absolutely correct. Yes, that's correct. So, which means to say, okay, if a person is buying momentum part because mm. they have no choice, no choice means uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe the, the wife is pregnant already or mm. maybe divorce case, immediately need to sell the house and buy separately. Uh, if not, I would say your exposure to risk is high in this sense. Mm. Right? I see. And the thing ab about real estate is uh, buying a property is a very extremely emotional process. Um, there is no logic to it, right? That is the reason why and how these properties are able to see capital appreciation. Because... Mm. And most people, I would say in, in my line of work, most people look at property as a consumption tool. So because of that, you know, it's like I buy a bottle of water, I drink, I, the, the value is gone, it's fine because they see it as that. Okay, so let's take a one bedroom as an example. Huh? Let's just, yes, yes. okay. Okay, I'm just going to use a random example. Let's, let's zoom our eyes to um, 1936. Can you see? Yep, on the left-hand corner. So you can see PP. Uh, PP stands for Purchase Price This Person by 1.062 million. Okay. So I'm just going to write it down. Purchase price is 1.062 million. Mm. Based on today's um, valuation, it's about 1.176 million. Okay. okay. 1.176 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take my calculator Give me one moment. Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, okay, I see there's some questions. Uh, Jenny is asking, where do you get this report? Okay. Later, we can ask Thomas. Okay. Thomas. Okay. They, uh, yeah. Okay. So later, can you also answer Jenny's question? How, where do you get this report? Okay. Uh, I'll answer it right now first. Uh. Right. Um, long story short, all this. Okay. By the way, it's very important for you to know. Every single data that you see here is from URA. That's point number one. And point number two is Singapore is one of the only countries in the world where the government mandates every single transaction be lodged, the caveat, and published. So this is why most rich people, they like to buy in Singapore because of this thing called transparency. Okay, So all these reports are from URA. It's all government regulated. And you can get them if you pay for it. Why do I have it? Because I'm an agent. I help a lot of customers to do planning. So I have to pay to get this data. So that's how you can get it. Or you, you have an agent like myself. You have anything to analyze, I analyze for you like what I'm doing for Chloe right now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. So let's, let's, if you guys have a calculator in front of you, I'll teach you a very simple concept. Okay. To how you in and ask yourself, should I buy now? Should I sell now? The moment you understand this concept, you, you kind of will get it. Okay. okay? So... When I buy a 1.062 million, so you press 1.062 million to your calculator, you press times 0 0.29. 0 0.29. So 307980. Okay. So right. in order for a person to buy a 1.062 million, this person needs to cough out 29%. Yeah. Right, 25% for down payment, 4% for stamp duty. So yeah. the initial outlay is 307980. Mm. Okay. So, assuming selling at one point, okay, now we need to understand the outstanding loan first. So, mm -hmm. 1.062, you can press that again into your calculator. Multiply by 0.75. Outstanding loan should be about 796,500. Okay? That's a bit mm -hmm. messy. I'm going to rewrite that. Yep, yep. 796,500. So, yep. because this is a new launch, which basically means over the course of three years, these people haven't paid much of their principal down. 
So let's go ahead and assume that the principal remains plus minus the same. Selling it at 1.176 million minus away my outstanding loan of $796,500. Now I would have 379500. Okay? Mm. Yeah, so this is what I will get back. And this is gross, ah? Gross. Mm. Gross, yeah. You need to minus away all your miscellaneous things like agent fee, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay? Yeah. So the question you need to ask yourself is this should I sell now? Right? So the, the, the question is when I sell at 1.176, which is based on today's estimated valuation. Mm. This amount of money that I get back, 379500 can mm. I do something better to grow this money? Yes or no? That's the question you want to ask yourself. If the answer is no, maybe when you get this money back, you don't know what to do with it, then probably you can hold, right? So this is kind of like a one-bedroom analysis. In three years, you grow your pot from 307 to 379. So basically, the net gain is about $79,000. About $70,000. Um, a uh, gross you, gross gain. Gross is about seventy. Gross, yes. Mm. Gross is about seventy. This is a one beta over three years. Mm. Okay. Okay. But yeah. you gotta understand these three years. You're not paying maintenance fee. No property tax. Um, very little mortgage repayment because it's uh progressive payment. Mm. You only came out with three oh seven. Today you're getting back three seven nine. This is a one beta. Mm. Okay. Yep. So okay. why is it in the real estate market everybody always talks about buying a bigger property. I'm going mm. to show you now. So now let's use a five bedroom as an example. Okay, now we look at 1938. Mm. Can you see the, the P&L went up by 529, 285 over three years. The same three years. But uh, $267,000, is it? Uh, let's look at 1938. Oh, 1938, okay, okay. Yeah, 529, yes, yes. So let's let's have a look at uh, two eight two eight nine eight uh. okay so we same calculation again two eight nine eight okay so we press into our calculator two eight nine eight we multiply by so this person cough out eight hundred forty thousand four hundred and twenty thousand two eight nine eight so now we multiply by so this person took a loan this is outlay this is a loan. This loan. person took a loan of 2.173 million. Yep. So based on today's valuation, this person can sell at 3.428. So 3.428 million. Mm. Okay, I minus away my outstanding loan of 2173500. Yep. So he took out 840. Today he's taking back 1.254 million and 500 dollars gross. Can oh you see the God. difference? This is a five beta analysis. Oh my gosh, how much profit is that? Goodness. Yes. Okay. So that is the reason why. So how do we know and whether or not a property can make money? You gotta understand this concept, ah. Four hundred k. Oh my gosh. In three years, ah. In three Goodness. years. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what you really need to understand is this, okay? You start, assuming at the one beta, you start out with 307. You end up with 379. Yeah. But how does this person be able to end up with 1.2? Because this person had an 840. So yeah. you see the difference. If you oh, if only from your 307, you have an 840, you now can also end up with a 1.254. Hmm. Okay? So profits in real estate is really simple, right? It's square feet. Multiply by PSF increase or decrease. Mm. This is how you calculate. That's the reason why a five bedroom, because the square footage is bigger. Yeah. When you multiply your um, per square foot increase, your profit margin is a lot higher. And that is one of the main reasons why people always advocate when you are young and you can take a loan, your loan tenure is long and stretched out. You buy a new launch where you're not paying much and then this is the kind of profits you can expect. Hmm. So next time when I buy, I should definitely buy bigger. Like minimally, what is the number of room that you advise? Minimally. Minimally. Okay. Okay. The first thing, uh, first the most, most, most important thing is be prudent. Okay. Don't buy beyond what you can afford. That's point number That's one. Right. Yeah. 
Second thing is the uh, government have already set in place a prudent measure. They call it the LTV slash TDSR. Yeah. The government makes sure that you need to have 29% of mm. the intended purchase amount before you are able to buy the property. Mm. So if this is the government's way of making sure you're prudent. Uh. Yeah. Uh, just fun fact for you, back in the days, uh, I think 10% can buy already, you know? <laughs> so to buy a $1 million property, you, you only 100K. need 100K. Yeah. yeah, 100K. Now you need 250K. Yeah. yeah. 29% is like 25% down payment plus 4% uh, stamp duty. And that's why make up 29%. So right now with 1 million property, right. you need to fork out 290K. So almost 300K in order to buy that 1 mil for down payment. Yes. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. So, um, so your question is, what is the minimum size? Firstly, always ask yourself, what is my 29 Ah, so it's a very simple reverse true, calculation, true. right? That's you're true. assuming you're twenty assuming you got four hundred thousand. Yeah. Four hundred divided by 0.29, you get one point three seven nine million. This is what you can afford. Lah. Then you buy this one. Mm, okay. Mm. I see. And then whether is it resale or whether is it new launch condo, it depends mm. on my objective. Your, yeah, it, okay, so the three main criteria, okay? The first one, I call it your risk appetite. Mm. The second one, I call it your financial objectives, okay? The third one, I call it your holding horizon. How long are you going to hold your property for? So these are the three main criteria. Mm. So mm. people, agents, your uncle, aunties, or whoever, la, you're assuming you attend a property course, right? Everybody will say property price sure will go up. That is true. However, what they are not telling you is this. When the property price increase, okay, you need to do this thing called a CT. CT stands for cost trajectory. Assuming you buy a $1 million property, you are bound to pay cost, right? Interest, yeah. maintenance fee, all that kind of stuff. So assuming, if you hold the property, assuming for 20 years, huh? And the cost that you have incurred, uh, assuming it's 500000 mm. okay, And your property at 20 years later, assuming uh, it's only worth $1.2 million. So mm. all the people who are unethically trying to sell property, right, they will tell you, your property got increased, half, ma, it went up by 200 k ma. But then the cost you incurred is 500 k So you're mm. still on the net loss. Mm. Mm. Yes. So always be clear of your cost trajectory. Yeah. And I think there's one thing very interesting because previously, right, uh, you also helped me to analyze my my dad's condo, right? And I like mm. have been staying here for like I think 20 years. <laughs> yes. A long, long time. But then actually the appreciation, the capital appreciation, even though it does look like the quantum is like a lot, but actually yes. not a lot as compared to if we just buy like three years and we flip, three years and we flip, right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, so if you do it every three years, then you will be able to achieve this one. Because yeah. you see, when you grow your 300 to 500 to 800, now your 800 can grow to 1.2. Mm. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Does that, uh, anybody got any questions? Yeah. Uh, Calvin is asking, what is the minimum income? What's the minimum income? That's a very good question. Okay, so in order for a person to buy a property, primarily you need to have two factors, okay? Number one is loan. Number two is down, okay? So from my experience, if you can afford the down, chances are you can afford the loan. Chances are. Mm. I give you an example. Huh? Mm. Assuming you have $300,000. Remember the magic formula is 300,000 yeah. divided by 0.29. Ma. Yeah. So with a 300k down, you are able to buy a 1.034 million. Mm. I'm just going to put this into the calculator. So based on the 1.034 million, 1034 million, you would take a loan of 775. Yeah. 500, right? So now I'm going to do a reverse calculation to find out how much money do I have to make 
in order for me to take a loan of 775k hmm. so i'm 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 sorry you cannot see my my calculator but i just going to press it now huh? anybody got any questions you can ask why uh jenny is asking is there any way to invest in a second property taking into account of the absd i do not encourage absolutely do not Right, because it doesn't make sense for you to pay what twenty percent more, right? If you want to buy a second property, yeah, maybe. I do not do not encourage. Your margin of safety is already twenty percent negative. <laughs> yes, when you enter that the is market, correct. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yes. So the Seven. Bad, yeah. So say that again. Uh yeah. So another question from Ken. Uh, views on the what's your view on like uh house crash? Like for example, recently Hong Kong market tank about 30 percent uh mm. with that wow thing that will happen to singapore's market i have a lot to say about that with one moment uh, i'm just computing okay. okay you will have to make approximately you make a guess uh, mm. how much do you think you need to make i already got the number here in order for you to borrow 775 you make a guess how much money do you need to make per month I guess uh, 5K, 5K. It's about 7,005. Oh. So here's my question, right? Mm. Remember just now I made a comment. Down is always more important than loan ma, because from my experience, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if you have 300K in savings and CPF, chances are you make at least 7,005 a month. Correct? Right? True. Yeah. So always focus on the down, then focus on the loan. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, just now somebody mentioned the... The Hong Kong house crash. Hong Kong crash. Okay, so these are the five things you need to understand in Singapore real estate um, terms, right? We call it the five demand pet. Okay, the first one, ABSD. Second one, SSD. The third one, CPF, the fourth one, PDSR, the fifth one, LTV. Demand so, cap, that means they, they control the demand, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So I want you to now ask yourself one question. Are all these cooling measures in full force? Yes or no? I think so. It is, right? Because you see ABSD for foreigners is 60%. Eh? Yep. SSD, uh, the first year you want to sell is 16%. Yeah. Right? Assuming tomorrow government say, uh, let's talk about CPF. Uh, everybody who buy property cannot use CPF. Property price will tank. Because yeah. how many people can afford to buy property without CPF, right? Mm. Okay, let's talk about total debt servicing ratio. Today, there is this thing called, uh, they, they take your income minus away your liability, a certain percentage you can use to pay your mortgage. Mm. Now, assuming the government tweaks that, they make it harder to borrow, mm. then property price will go down further, right? Mm. Lastly, we yep. have this thing called the loan to value, which is 75%. Mm. If let's say tomorrow government say, the down payment for property instead of um, 25%, down payment now become 2%. Property price will shoot up like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So the first thing we need to understand about the Singapore property market is right, it's heavily regulated and controlled by government. Mm. Assuming government see that property price is about to crash, uh, mm. all they have to do is to say, hey, all the Fu Jian Fang, uh, China people, buy that, buy. We remove additional buy stamp duty in only 60% anymore. Anybody can buy. Then the price will shoot up again. That's true. Yeah, so it's it's highly unlikely for market forces to affect Singapore property price because the government already built this demand. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Very, very in interesting insights. How many of you have been learning a lot from Thomas sharing? You've been learning, right? Can you type learn in the chat, right? I'm learning a lot. Like, these give me more, like... I think a piece of mind when it comes to investing in Singapore as well, right? As a property. Fantastic. I can see a lot of you are learning a lot as well. And then uh XT is having this question. Shouldn't we take into account uh of our expenses as well as when calculating our loan affordability? 
Should we not take into consideration expenses? Uh, so, should, shouldn't we? That means we should. Mm, we yeah. should. Yes, definitely we should. That's why at the start, I already say, whatever that we talk about today, being prudent is the most important factor. So the government have already taken care of this for you because they have this thing called the total debt servicing ratio. So I'm just going to write in on a new page. Huh? So your total debt servicing ratio, before you can even have this, you will go through this process called the in-principle approval and IPA. Mm. So the banker would need to see your income, your liability, your expenses before they give you a loan amount. So even if you don't want to take into consideration, the banker will do it for you. So this is TDSR. Mm. Okay, yep. I see. All right. Uh, okay, so one more question. Tessa is asking, is it hard for a couple with BTO on the way to enter property market in the future with both names as the owner? Wow, that's a very good and interesting question. The first point is, with BTO, I cannot guarantee anything in life. Uh, but I can pretty much, if you buy BTO, you are guaranteed a profit. You sure okay? hard. Sure hard, right? Yes. So, now, Tessa, right? I'm going to do an assumption. Okay? I'm going to assume that you bought your BTO for 700k. Is it a safe assumption? You see, yeah? you buy your BTO for 700k, as, as an example. Assuming you took a loan of 560k, this is a uh, 80% of 700k. Okay, your outstanding loan is 560k. Ah? Now, assuming down the road, 10 years down the road, you manage to sell your property, honestly, BTO, 700k means it's in a pretty good location. Let's yeah. just say you sell 1 million. Five years later, your outstanding loan of 560, ah, just conservatively, let's just say your outstanding loan becomes 530. Lah. Mm. Okay. So today I take my $1 million minus away my 530. I have essentially grown my proper I, I will take back about 470. Yeah. Yep. But when I bought my 700,000 BTO with a 20% upfront, I only paid 140k. Le. Oh my gosh, yeah. 140 become 470k. $330,000 profit. In five years. Crazy, man. And let's let's remember the magic number 470 divided by 0.29. You are now able to buy a 1.6 million dollar condo. Mm. Mm. So that's how we help people to um improve their assets in real estate through leverage. Mm. Yeah. So Tessa, I think it's a great. Very blessed of you to be able to have a PTO, right? And then after that, five years down the road, MOP, when you sell it off, you are already having a very good uh, cash with you. Then mm. you can consider investing in a private property then. Yeah, oh, it wouldn't be a stretch for you because you already have a lot of cash. That's how, how I see a lot of people in Singapore, they do it, right? Because you, you have the ability to buy BTO. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. One point six. Question, uh, one point six. We say, what do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean, Stefan? What do you mean by one point six? Okay. In the meanwhile, okay, how mm. how many? Okay, so I can see a lot of you guys find that uh Thomas sharing is very useful. Learn a lot, fantastic. Okay, so for those, okay, in in case you are also in the process, for example, like me, I'm also in the process of thinking about, hey, should I actually consider selling away my property? What it should be my next move if I were to sell it away, and whether is it the right time? If I have a lot of these kind of very personal questions because everybody's situation is different, right? Thomas is actually giving us a, a like a consultation, like a complimentary consultation to you. Should you want to want him to review your property situation, right? Because as mm. you can see, right, based on the way that he analyzed, he really looked at the lot of data and then to help you to really find out the best situation for you, right? So at yes. the end of the day, right, if this is something that you want Thomas to actually go through together with you, right, then uh, I think it's really good that you actually have him to, yeah, look into your property property investment. Basically, that you want to buy your home, you want to sell your home, or maybe you want to consider renting out, I'm not sure, right? Then mm -hmm. I think Thomas will be here to assist you, right? So Thomas, is it okay? Yeah. Just overtake your share screen for a while. Overtake, so I stop the share screen. Yeah, yeah thank One you. One moment, please. Let me uh stop the share screen. Is it stop? Yes. Mm. 
All right. So yeah. So uh, Thomas is actually giving us all right because it's the it's a very special friendship that we are doing this as well. All right. So I hope that you guys have really enjoyed the sharing. I, I think like I'm learning so much from him as well. So during the one to one consultation, the best part is he can even look in depth into your own personal situations, right? For example, uh, like for myself, right? Even for my family's property as well, we are thinking about, oh, how can we actually structure it better because we've been staying here for like 20 years. There is no... Uh, there's no cash flow because we are staying here. But at the same time, what can we do further? Is it possible to improve on the property investment portfolio as well? So I think uh, if this is the same question you're having, then just um, yeah, go ahead to scan this QR code. And basically, it's a Google form. And once you go into the Google form, all right, there are a few questions that uh, Thomas needs your help to fill up so that he can understand your situation better, right? Then when he jump on the one-to-one -one call with you, then uh, he will be better to assist you as well. So Thomas, usually how does that go? Like after people submit the form, how mm. would you get in touch with them? Okay, so usually um, we will do a WhatsApp first. Then maybe we can get on the call to align our understanding of your situation. And then uh, ultimately we will have you prepare a list of very comprehensive questions you want answered with numbers uh, because when I meet you, I will definitely use all the data to show you uh, whatever you want to know. And this, this session, depending on how many questions you have, it will take about an hour or two. So from there, by the end of the first meetup session, you will definitely already have a strategy on how you want to proceed with full clarity of what's at the end of the tunnel behind every option that you will, that is available for you. Mm, yeah. And if you have any question during that time, say, hey, should I consider, let's say, re resale or new launch, then uh, yeah, Thomas will be able to uh, uh, assist you according to your needs. Because at the end of the day, maybe you think that, oh, I want a new launch, but maybe it might not be the best for you. Right? Yes. <laughs> then yes, he correct. will also give you advice accordingly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Stefan is asking this question. 1.6 million mm. resale after sell BTO need place to stay. Mm. Oh. Oh, okay. So, so that's why based on Tessa's uh, question, he is asking, so let's say Tessa wants to sell away her BTO five years down the road. Should she yes. do a resale or new launch at that time? Wow. This is quite a deep dive question. Okay. So I'm going to just answer in a very um, general for, for you to understand the concept first. Okay. Now, the moment you buy a resale, remember the caveat and the P&L? When your P&L does not cover your cost trajectory, then you need to ask yourself, maybe it's more worth it to pay renter. Mm. Right? Think about it. Because if your cost is higher than what you can get back when you sell, it's a loss. And if the rental loss is lesser, then you might as well pay renter. And then with the equity that you did not invest into the resale, you could have done better with another vehicle mm, yeah so that's yeah. the top process that uh, i think that's very true it's always about thinking about in terms of relativity right yes yes yeah so then uh, which one gives you the highest form of return there could be certain things that you might need to take a heat but if if that is like the the best thing to do, then you take the hit first because eventually your overall profits will be a lot better than you actually going ahead with, let's say, a resale strategy right away. Yes. And let me let me share a fun fact with you that not many people say it out loud, right? In my line of work, real estate, I deal with people from all different industries, right? And what I can tell you is this. The older a person gets, the choices that they make are very often illogical mm. because from what I've seen in the older people, they, I mean, of course, as we get older, right, we are nearer and nearer to our death date, right? So to us at that point, it's more important that we feel happy. Don't make money, never true, mind. True, true, true. As long as I like the property, anyway, I've accumulated some wealth my younger days. So that also gives you the explanation as to why and how properties, even though it's so expensive already, will continue to go up. So that, that's another thing. Yeah, it reminds me of my friend, right? Like he, he uh, his parents have an, like, I think maybe two or three different condo. And then one of the condo, they just completely leave it empty. They don't yes. even send it out. I'm like, yes. what a waste. Yes, yes, yes. 
yeah, there are people who like to keep their properties in mint condition. So yeah, the older people, with, especially those with more money, they, you know, very often they don't make logical sense. And that's where you, if you can identify this category of people, that's where you make the money from them. <laughs> Okay, I like how you say it. So, okay, so if you uh, scan the Google form, right, basically you will go through this uh, process and make sure you fill up your name, your email, your mobile so that Thomas can uh, uh, to, to WhatsApp you, right? And then please let us know uh, what is your nationality, right? Because if you are Singaporean versus you are foreigner, right, the property game is completely different, right? So make sure you fill it out accordingly as well. And then uh, what is your current residential property portfolio? If you are uh, living in HDB or EC, just let us know, right? So that Thomas will be able to better assist you. Then most importantly, uh, please also let Thomas know that whether it's your property still within the SSD or MOP period. If yes, then how many years remaining? Because that will also affect the strategy as well, right? So mm. uh, after that, right, what type of property do you intend to uh, purchase, right? Because let's say you want to sell away your property, what do you intend to look into next? So if you're not sure, then you just select I'm open to discussion because that's when Thomas actually comes in to share with you different proposal. Then you can see which one best fit for you according to your needs as well, right? And then uh, do you intend to purchase a new, next pro uh, new property in the next six months? If you're not sure, just click maybe. And uh, of course your budget, because at the end of the day, based on your budget, Thomas will also be able to work out better in terms of what would be a better plan for you in the future. And feel free to also share with him the kind of additional details that you might not be able to uh, cover with just filling out the multiple choice questions. If you have certain background story that you need to share, right, just feel free to write it here. This is optional, right? If you don't have, you just submit. But if you do have, then Thomas, at least he can prepare better, right? Before jumping on the first WhatsApp call with you, mm. right? Yeah. Okay, so any more additional questions that uh you guys have for Thomas? Yeah, if you want, you can just fill up the form and you can get in touch from there. Yeah, yes, uh, can say that the, the parents have too much money. Okay, <laughs> right. So I, I personally feel that like if I have the choice, it was, it's always good to start with BTO, right? But because I have no yeah, choice. Yeah, of course, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> have no choice I, I cannot go with the pto route then i go with the private route from the very beginning but if you can mm. as a fantastic you can go for bto then five years down the road you can sell away your bto you can upgrade a lot better a lot faster so back then because yeah. three years ago when i first bought my first property I didn't have a lot of cash as well. And that's why for myself, I start with a one better uh, investment for Normentum Park. Uh, but right now, if I can, if I know this advice earlier, right? for example, if Thomas, uh, back three years ago, I didn't know him yet. I didn't know him like two years ago. And oh, and was it last year? Yeah, I think it was yeah, last think, year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you even went to my house for housewarming. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming to my housewarming party. So, like, imagine if we actually go through this thought process with me earlier, I will probably borrow money from my parents, right? Like, mm -hmm. instead of just using my own cash, which mm. I use my own cash to buy my property one better, right? I could have just, you know, like, talk to them and say, hey, is it possible that you just lend me certain part of like maybe another 200K? I can literally buy like a two beta or even three beta for momentum part. Yes. Then yes. my profit will be way, way more because as you guys can see, right? The five beta versus mm -hmm. one beta, that yes. is 400K, almost 400K difference. So yes. that's why I felt that this kind of uh, advice and consultation is very useful, especially if you are very new to the property game really go for expert advice first, right? Then in the end, you can decide what is a better route for yourself, right? So yeah, I wish I, I had this conversation with you <laughs> three years ago, but I didn't. Well, at least next time I know what should I do with my next property purchase, I will discuss with you first for sure. Mm. <laughs> okay. So any more additional questions from the from the crowd, from the from the students here? All right. If not, all right, maybe you guys can let me know what is your greatest learning from this entire one and a half hour of market update, all right? Let us know what is your greatest learning from this entire one and a half hour sharing from myself, from Thomas. We give you a different perspective. And I think property is always a very good investment if you have the cash to really mm. diversify. 
because the worst thing that you want is you put everything, right? In my opinion, I think it's very dangerous to put all your eggs into one basket. <laughs> and that's why I don't dare to put all my money into the stock market. I really want to diversify. And that's how I'm diversifying with real estate. I'm diversifying with a little bit of gold right now. Right? But I think the one that gave me the most peace of mind will be real estate. And then the stock mm. market is definitely here for, for more like faster growth in the long run. But I wouldn't put 100%. So if I, you have more cash, consider diversifying as well, right? So more familiar about decision-making to buying condo. I'm glad that helps you, Kelvin. Okay, how about others? What, what else do you guys learn, right? So uh, Thomas, any last thing that you want to uh, share or wrap up before we, we close off today? Yes, if there's one thing I want to say is that um, this month, November, there is a lot of new launches coming mm -hmm. up, all right? If there is one that even if you don't want to buy, even if you don't want to buy, you want to see and learn because I'm, I'm going to now put my head on the chopping board and I'm going to tell you that this is going to be good, all right? Yeah. One is going to be Trump Park, 100%. Trump Park. Yes, you heard it here first, okay? Record the date, 4th of November. Today's my birthday. Record the date, today the time. And then three years down the road, look back and you see Chuan Park profit will look like Normandon Park or more. Okay, where? How do I spell? Chuan, C H U A N. C H U A N. Park. Chuan Park. Yeah, Chuan Park. Oh, the Chuan Park. Okay. The I one see. that got on blog. Yeah, I, I, I promise you. Even if you don't want to buy, Go and, I mean, come, of course, come with me, right? I'm a property yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the show flat, understand the layout, understand why this property is going to be so profitable, very similar to Normanton Park. Wow, wow, interesting. Okay, okay, it's very next mm. to, very near to Serangoon. Yes, in fact, right, it's 30 meters away to the Lorong Chuan MRT. Hmm, Okay. Yeah, I, I, will, yes. I will I will get in touch with you. I want to come and see and look, look. Come see, and see, look, come look. and see, really. Really must see, must see. Interesting, interesting. Okay, cool. Okay, fantastic. How much is per square foot? Um, the, the, now it's the preview stage, right? We are expecting 2, 2 to maybe 2, 5 plus minus 2, 2 to 2, 5. Mm, mm. Because if, if Woodlands is already 2, 0, 8, 0, how can Serangoon yeah. be? Right. Oh, yeah. so right now it's VVIP. That's correct. That's can, correct. What's also booking date? A day is the day to like so called go down and then throw your check. Um, in, correct. Now this is not accurate. The target has been shifted forward because of overwhelming demand. Um, the show flat has only been around for um three days. Fifteen thousand oh visitors already. Ah. Huh. There's only okay. nine hundred eighteen units. Ah, uh, fifteen thousand visitors. Wow, that's pretty crazy. It is crazy. It is going to be crazy, so must see. Wow, only 150 meters from Lauren Chuan. Wow. Lesser, lesser. Okay. Yes. Okay, I, sh I, sh I want to come and see. Yeah, yeah, come and see. Make an appointment with me and then come and see. Yeah, maybe before I go Hawaii. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so these few days, right? These few days can come and see, right? Yes, yes, yeah. You you text me, let me know when you want to come and then, then go and see. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So by the way, guys, today it's uh Thomas birthday and I he decided <laughs> to spend this special day with us. Okay, so can everybody type happy birthday to Thomas? Thank you so much for spending <laughs> you, your precious you. time. Yeah, thank really, you, thank thank you. You. Yeah. so much from you. And hopefully you had a lot of fun as well. I, I think yes, you are I, so I good. Did. I did have a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you and uh, thank you everybody as well for spending your precious time with us and celebrating your special day with Thomas as well. So happy birthday. <laughs> <to> <laughs> okay, so I will see you guys next round during the update market updates. Hope you guys had a lot of fun learning. And then, mm. uh, yeah, I want to take a photo with Thomas. Hold on. How do you think? I just take like a screenshot. <laughs> okay, I, I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so three, two, one. 
Awesome. I took it already. All right. Thank you, everybody. And see you guys next round. And for those who have uh, submitted the form, Mary Thomas will be getting in touch with you guys very soon in the next few days. And then, mm. yeah, then discuss with him how can he best help you to continue your property journey as well. All right. So see you guys during the next sharing. Bye-bye. Arigato. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.